So do admissions officers check social media? Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are here with a special guest, Syl, my mentor, a friend. She's also a former University of California admissions officer, also a college consultant and college admissions expert. So I'm super excited to have her as a guest today. Hello, Syl, say hello to the channel. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I hope my hair looks good. Always looks good. <laughs> Syl and I actually have been working on a project together that is super secret, but very exciting. I know everybody says that they're working on a cool project, but we're actually working on a cool project and it's a small teaser into what we're doing today. So once that's out, I'll be linking everything below, plugging it on my social media accounts. I also have all of Syl's contacts below. So if you wanna work with her, definitely check her out and let's get straight to the video. So number one, what is the most important quality you guys look for? You know, I think we have to remember that there's qualifications and then there's qualities. So the qualifications are no brainers, your coursework, the GPA you've obtained from that coursework, the test scores, that's debatable right now because of certain things that are happening, but we're also looking at extracurricular activities. How are you involved? What are you doing outside the classroom? We want to really want to get to know you in all different types of angles. So now qualities that come with those extracurricular activities, it'll show us the discipline. It'll show us your commitment, your innovation, such as yourself. And then the curiosity you have in the discipline that you're interested in studying, or just the curiosity in general. And I'm guessing every institute weighs each of those differently, correct? Absolutely. So each institution is going to be very clear with you as to what they're asking for. Some may ask you just for grades and test scores, and I call those gangsters because they, they don't want to they don't want to hear your little story, right? They, they just, they they just want to know what they want to know, and that's <laughs> grades and test scores, and let's keep it real. Others will be very honest about the fact that they want you to share more, okay. and they'll give you questions, and they'll expect some answers that are, you know, genuine. How many admissions officers actually read my application? Again, depending on the institution, you might have from two to a group of four. It may be a collective where you meet and you discuss. It may be individual where you are, you know, just making those, you're reading through them to make sure that you're getting um, to know the applicant to decide whether this is someone that should move forward or, you know, what, what a status you should assign to them. You are vouching for, at least in universities, you know, every application does get read, correct? But yes, I am vouching that if they ask for it, they're going to read it. Also actually read my essays? Yes. Okay. Because um, that's part of what the ask is, right? If you're asking someone to do something, that's part of the requirement for admissions. Now, we're also looking at the fact that they may have some um, access to scholarships on campus that they can refer you to. So it's never a bad thing when they're asking you to write something. The the challenge becomes when the student doesn't answer the question or they're not on point with how something has influenced their journey. Folks are reaching out to me wanting to, you know, frantically work on this when they should have been doing this but maybe a few months ago. I started really early, but I was still editing to the, the last week because yeah. the work can never be done. So the earlier you start, the more time you have to like draft again, brainstorm again. You can scrap the whole thing, right? because either way, you're probably gonna be working on it to the last week, no matter how early you start. Absolutely, and if for those that are underclassmen right now that might be listening to this, traditionally when I start with students in the summer, I, I take a pause like September-ish, maybe a, a two or three weeks. We also wanna do a salt and pepper of your senior year. Yes, we're reflecting on your high school career, but we wanna make sure that we're also salt and peppering with what you're doing now. And this senior year was pretty interesting for most, let's say. How did you really represent class of 2021 while you were in COVID? What, what was it that you were doing? I know this might be dated, but there might be something else that influences your environment, your region. We, we live in some areas that are being hit hard by weather, by fires. So all of that needs to be um, included in the present time of your senior year. Right, absolutely. Let's say an admissions officer, they see my application and they're deciding yes or no. Is there a point system? So like an A in honors class is worth 10 points. Extracurricular at gold medal is worth five points. And is there a certain like a mathematical threshold that every application needs to meet to make that admissions? Or is it more just like a, I'll give you a general gist. I feel a yes for you. Well, we're looking at, you know, GPA first and foremost is the one that gets the weight. 
for honors and AP classes, IB programs. So it's, those that's in general calculated within being in those classes. So that's, right. that's something that if you're asking about points, then yes, that way. But mm-hmm. we're also looking at uh, the whole application. And again, what has been the ask? If they're asking for writing to go along with it, then there can't be really an assigned point system because it's hard to be able to say, like you just mentioned, you're going to give this to someone that has done this activity or give this because somebody has done that activity. It, it's not, it, it can't be, it, it can't be calculated in that manner. But there are some institutions um, that will be very clear with you. You get this GPA with this test score, you're in or you're out. And then if you're in, you get this kind of scholarship. So again, doing the research as to how the institutions are looking at your application, and that's a telltale sign with what they're asking you to give them. So one of the most popular questions I'm getting right now is the idea of test optional. Is it going to look bad? Is it going to look like a cop out? Some schools are doing no test at all, but let's say I have a test, but it's not that good. But if a school's test optional, should I still submit it? I didn't get to retake it because of COVID. Like, what do you suggest? Like this whole test test optional thing is a lot on people, especially juniors who were in COVID, now seniors. What are you suggesting? Well, first and foremost, any institution is going to want you to be safe. They're going to want you to, if it's, uh, you know, not, first of all, not available in your area, or if you have to travel out of your area, we don't need that, especially with um, spikes being anticipated in the winter and all that other good stuff. There are some states that are still expecting for you to have a test. So you do need to know that if you're applying to certain institutions in a certain state, that they're going to expect that from you. But they're also giving you leeway to do it as late as in March, April. Uh, That just means that you won't know if you're admitted into that institution (laughs) until later. So that's more drama, right? Right. But um, so with your test optional schools, really that's that's an opportunity for the student to be able to really weigh, do I want to represent myself in this way? whatever test score it is that you feel some sort of way about because then at the end if you aren't admitted to the institution you're going to feel some sort of way about it right Mm -hmm. so take advantage of this make sure you have that conversation whether it be with that um, college expert or that college um, advisor that can give you some guidance on that to submit that's your test optional your test line they're being clear they're not going to look at the test they don't want it (laughs) so why are you trying to give it to me uh (laughs) And again, because we don't know what's going to impact those institutions, you don't know how what how the student's going to impact it if they even get a chance to sit in that exam and the anxiety of sitting, plus the test anxiety in general. You know, there those tests are, are pretty stressful. Now for your AP test, again, it's the same thing. You know, last spring we had a whole group of AP test takers that had to do really unusual and unorthodox methods to take their tests. So uh, again, it really does make a difference, but I do want to stress the fact that if you, if it's not submitted and it's being told that it's not optional, it's not going to go against you. It's not a trick. These offices are there to admit you, not decline you. So if they're telling you and being honest about this is what we're not expecting this year or next, then take it at face value. Don't be stressed out about if they're trying to trick you. You don't think it'll look bad if I, let's say it's test optional, if I don't submit my score, does it look like, oh, she probably didn't have good scores? No, not at all. And then we're also talking about a general individual, a general major, you know, that you might be applying to. So if you're looking at engineering, then that's another way to show how you are developing your expertise in your math and your science, right? Mm -hmm. So there you really have to weigh, am I, am I really going to be able to present my best foot forward? But again, if the institution is telling you it's optional, take it as value. If you are going to submit your test scores, it's important that you understand that this could also help you for placement. Maybe um, it might also help you to shine brighter in a scholarship consideration. So all of this is meant to help set the context of who you are and what type of student you are. It's not meant to, you know, get trick you into, oh, he, 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 look, they really right. aren't that, that awesome. Don't overthink it. it. Don't overthink it. Yeah. And a lot of it really, honestly, right now is a lot of overthinking based on anxiety, not just about college applications, but here we are close to finals. And then some schools do finals after winter holiday. So, you know, there's a lot of anxiety for a lot of different reasons. 
So you just want to make sure that the things that you really need to stress about, you should, and others that are just bold, told, bold, boldly telling you that they're not expected of you. Nobody's trying to trick you. Relax. I'm here to tell you the adults are your friends. I always tell people like test scores or things at this point of application, you can't change them, right? Like that is what it is. And you have to just work on the factors that you can control. And, and ultimately now at this point, it's really the writing. And I know I sound like a broken record, but really that's, that's what you have the most control over. And quite honestly, that's hard because you have to find the time to really invest what you want to share with, um, with anyone, whether it be a scholarship or an internship or college admissions. Another question I get asked is what's more important, GPAs and test scores or essays and experience. We're looking at coursework. We're looking at GPA. That's our meat and potatoes. We can't get around that. The the compliments, let's say, you know, the accoutrements mm-hmm. would be your extracurricular activities, your essays. Those would be the important pieces to include if, if requested, if asked for. So you want to make sure that at the end of the day, you really start working on your college applications, probably like in seventh and eighth grade, not even maybe even before that because you're building it right right but you can take coursework that's considered for your college application in the seventh and eighth grade uh, not to be not to stress anybody out if they started you know it was their yesterday <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it's okay honestly if classes you know their sophomore or junior years i'm not referring to that i'm just saying that your academic record is really what's going to be uh, address. Let's just remember also that if you had dips or you didn't do as strongly as you wanted a certain year, you know, maybe that's what you want to write about and, and get into in terms of uh, representing yourself. So I think this is a great transition into my next question when you're talking about like big tragic events and just making sure at the end of the day, the world still moves forward. So how were you able to adapt and how were you able to still even slowly move forward, right? Like people want to know a progress story. Are there any big red flags you see in an applicant or even topics that they should avoid talking about? Maybe it's overused or overdone. So the three Ds are usually what um, individuals will kind of overuse. When I'm referring to overuse, I'm saying that they'll state it and then they don't, that's it. That's, there was a death. There was a divorce. There was disease. How is that going to show that you overcame something or how you approach a problem or you know we don't want to be disrespectful as a reader Mm -hmm. to your your story that may be painful that Mm -hmm. may be difficult we want to make sure that we're addressing what came of it how does that manifest the person that you are the The so what right that the maturity level the, Mm -hmm. the level of of stepping up to any situation because then you can talk about how then from that experience, you discovered a a career you want to be involved in, or that you didn't know you were a leader in that way until blah, blah, blah happened. So you had something devastating happen to you. How has that translated to your strength now? So it's great to talk about the takeaway, but that extra little seasoning is going to be now, how do you, you know, take, take that, that moment. And what is the saying? When life gives you lemons, you know, you make lemonade. Make a lemonade. <laughs> so does your lemonade have strawberry in it? Zhuzh with some tahiti? Or how are you now taking it to the next level? And really, again, stressing the fact that how you take something to the next level may be humbling to you. And it's hard for some students to really kind of hype themselves. Right. But this is the moment to do so. And you're doing it with facts. You're, you're actually telling me and then backing it up with whatever the situation is now. So do admissions officers check social media? Should I be making my things private? Should I be changing? I know senior year, I changed my Facebook name. I made my Instagram private. Not that I had anything incriminating at all, but I think it was a common thing to kind of tidy it all up. There have been in recent years, uh, very, very public indications of where institutions have come, certain things have come to light to an institution, whether it was from their admitted group that kind of connected offline with, you know, from- Oh, I think I saw some of that stuff, yeah. Yeah, so it used, nine times out of 10, it's because the student has opened the door for the institution to To look. Yeah, and if it's against, again, code of conduct, any institution is gonna expect their admitted or their um, current students to adhere to it. And whether you claim you don't know it 
it, it, some of it is pretty, you know, pretty much common sense. The other thing I have to point out is that when you're admitted to an institution, it's conditional. You've been told that you're admitted. Yay, let's have a party. But <laughs> come July, when you give us your, tran your final transcripts, they better look as cute as the others did when you self-reported. Can we slip a little bit with senioritis as long as we don't completely blow it out of the water? So, you know, senioritis does, does take over some people's lives. And if you decide not to go to school for like three months, <laughs> we got a little bit of a problem because if we get into the D's and F's, we got a whole lot of explaining to do. Right, right, right. Again, if you had a hard time trying to explain yourself to get in, then- how <laughs> Imagine that combo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a conversation you want to have. But let's say, you know, Sylvia wasn't the best in English. I mean, excuse me, in math, then she's got to be able to, you know, she, if her grade dipped, she's got to be able to be a big girl and say, look, I, you know, this and this is happening. The math class was got, was got the hit COVID me online and math, not a good combination. So here's what happened. Got, I ended up getting a C, right. you know, whatever, whatever grade you got. Um, but you bringing it to the institution is very different than them finding out in okay. July by themselves when they're trying to, you know, reconcile things. So besides financial aid and more need-based scholarships, what advice do you have for people trying to get merit-based scholarships, academic, region awards, chancellor awards? So again, that's going back to your coursework and your GPA, but then the involvement outside of your classroom. What is that? Where are, you, where are you really standing out when it comes to the individual, the citizen you are within your community? So being proactive with that, making sure that you um, really highlight what you're doing in your writing, because that's what's going to give everybody the, the introduction to who you are and, and hopefully be invited to be part of those programs. Do you think with COVID that means less students will be admitted? No, I don't. We have to remember that the numbers of individuals who are admitted are based on the availability on the campus. So institutions will be graduating, hopefully, <laughs> their students, and they'll know the population that they can house or, or educate, if you will, on the campus. And so you project, I'm good, we're going to admit these many, because eventually when everything fleshes out, we're going to have X amount of individuals who actually have accepted our offer. A's and B's in honors classes slash AP classes, or should I get straight A's in regular classes? This is my super favorite question in the world because then it goes back to, well, <laughs> what do you have available at your high school? What you have available at your high school and what level you have available at your high school, super important because readers will be looking at what's those two things at your high school and whether or not you took advantage of them. So you may have some super flossy grades in one level of coursework when someone else might have super flossy grades <laughs> in the higher level. And remember that honors and AP classes will be weighted. You know, that will also bump GPAs. It's really important that you try and maximize what resources you have at your high school because any university or college is going to be challenging academically to jump into. And if you haven't practiced or groomed that educational muscle, it's going to be challenging for you. So you might as well start that, you know, through your high school career versus trying to be, you know, super enthusiastic when you get to a university or college. The transition will be challenging. I always tell people that do the best you can while still trying to challenge yourself a little bit, maybe even slowly work your way up. So maybe you just all regular classes and you got all A's, maybe just add one honors. Maybe right. you got an A there or an A minus or B plus, like just try to weave it in, but also don't do all honors and AP if you're going to be getting, you know, C's or failing grades, because right. maybe that's not the right balance for you. Right. Right. And, and understanding that most AP classes are going to ask for ac independent academic work, IB programs, independent academic work and research. So you want to make sure that that's the type of learning style that's good for you. And that takes a lot, quite honestly, Angelica, that's a lot of insight to who you are as a student. And are, can you figure that out at 14, 15 to really, you know, uh, forecast what your college career is going to be like? That's, that's really challenging. I think that's where parents sometimes are 
most enthusiastic about what they're listening, their ear to the ground of what they want their children to be a part of or to excel in. But at the end of the day, is that program a fit for your child? Because you also know what challenges they have academically. This is my last question. So all these schools, so they say we're holistic, we're liberal, we're open-minded. We see the whole application. Yet clearly, if you look at their test scores, your average GPA, SAT, ACT, the average scores of majority of their students, the 25th to 75th percentile, which makes up most of their body, there's a clear pattern they're looking for, yet they keep saying, oh, we're so holistic, but there is a narrative for at least those quantifiable measures they are looking for. What do you advice do you have for people who don't meet those average scores who are trying to get into those certain schools? I'm always going to encourage a student to apply to their dream school. I'm never going to tell a student don't apply there. I don't think that's my job as a college coach. I, that's not my, my role to, to crush dreams, <laughs> crush dreams. But I am going to tell you a little bit about yourself in comparison to that school. So then we do need to work on X, you know, we do need to do Z. And, and really, honestly, if that's your school, then how have you been networking with them? Have you reached out to the admissions representatives? Did you, if they visited your school, did you jump in on that presentation? Did you go to that college night or whatever, whatever the, the relationship is with that institution in your campus? Sometimes you have to be more proactive, right? And, you know, find out who your representative is and get to know them. Uh, and that, that's an important part of the process for you to understand what a student like you and your profile is going to be able to do. The profile is based on the applicants. So it's not like the institution has said, this is who we want. It's based on all the applicants and who, and their profiles and what they've done. And we're just talking about those name brand schools right now. There's right. a lot of institutions that have fantastic programs are doing the same thing that name brand schools are doing, but they don't get as many applications because maybe their marketing is right. not as great as another school. So we do have to remember that in balancing with what your reality is, we also want to make sure that we have those schools on your list as well. And you feel comfortable that you would want to go to an institution like that. So safeties, match schools, reach schools, and having realistic expectations, but also knowing like where you stand, right? And having those expectations, right? Absolutely. I mean, don't don't underestimate whether you could get admitted, but know the reality of what that looks like for you. What's what tips do you got? Just like some last, you know, rounds for people. Well, we didn't talk about word count. It is important to keep to word count. I know that uh, I've been challenged by students that are like, but I know that I can go over by, you know, so many words. Well, they gave you a word count for a purpose, they, for a reason. So they want you to keep it to 350 because you don't want to ramble. Any, anything right. after that, based on the question they're asking you, you're rambling. And that's hard. Editing is one thing, but having to bring it to word count is a whole nother conversation. So we always want to work on content first, but then eventually we do want to get it down to the number that's been asked of you. Well, thank you so much, Syl, for being on my channel today. I'm going to be listing all of Syl's contacts below where you can reach her. You can also have her as your consultant and help you get into your schools that you want. I have tons of other videos on college apps. I also have an entire Instagram dedicated towards these resources. So definitely check them out. And yeah, let me know in the comments below any other questions you have. Maybe if we get enough, we'll have Syl on again just in time for the next round. But for now, thank you so much and I'll see you all next time.